Right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Teaching Live. As you can tell by my deep intake of breath, as, as what usually happened, let me paint a picture for you. On a Monday morning, David and I are sitting here, um, sipping our cups of tea, uh, waiting uh, and, and munching on our, our crumpet or slice of toast, and the time is ticking ever closer to nine o'clock. <laughs> And we're waiting for pie. <laughs> and we're waiting for pie. And and we, we're very calm <laughs> until it actually gets to 9.30. And we're waiting for pie. <laughs> Good I'm morning, old. Pie. How are you this morning? I'm what? old. I've got a bus pass. I thought I was early. I don't know what's going on. I did. I actually thought I was early. <laughs> no, you were dear, late. Oh, dear. Thank you for your patience, everybody. I'm sorry to be a little bit late, um, but uh, uh, I, very, very exciting because I maybe I got delayed. I did get delayed. Actually, I was looking at the blog posts and um, there's some very, very fine writing uh, that's gone up there. Um, and uh, and I saw a, I think it was over the weekend, David, you will have seen this as well. Uh, and John as well. Um, Morelands, did you see some of that work that was yes, beautifully produced? Absolutely, superb presentation as well. Yeah, uh, brilliant, brilliant work from Morelands, uh, which are down in Sale, which is a uh, part of the country that I I know well. I used to live in Sale, and it's a nice part of the world. So well done, everybody at Morelands. Oh, we've got a couple of late schools arriving, even later than Pi. Oh, well, uh, you see, I knew it. I knew a few people were just so. Uh, I was just sort of, you know. Oh, welcome to sure. Willow Class in Rolvenden. You, 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 you've broken, broken the record. You're later than Pi. Um, so well done, everybody. Uh, good to have you all this morning. We better crack on, Pi. What's the game this morning? OK, well, last week we were looking at perception. And when you get to reading Tiger, um, which we, I suggest you probably start in the last week of, uh, so next week, the last week of, um, uh, of January, there is a door of perception and perception is to do with seeing things, um, and studying things very closely in a very concentrated, careful way. And then we can try and reproduce that through artwork or, um, or through writing, which we were doing last week. This week is a little bit different. So in the story, there is actually uh, a door um, that is a door of imagination. And I asked uh, SF Said what was the difference in his view between perception and imagination? And he does write about it in the book. But imagination, he said to me, imagination is about entering into things rather than just observing them from the outside. So that's perception when you observe from the outside. But imagination is almost when you sort of become the thing yourself. So you experience their own reality from their own point of view. What is it like to be a dog or a, or, or a fish or a tree or whatever it is? It's a bit like empathy, but applied to everything, objects, places, animals and people. It's like perception, but deeper and from within. And then finally, creation is another step beyond so we're going to look at imagination. We're going to look at almost becoming whatever it is that we're writing about. So the game, David, is this. Partner A chooses. We're going to write about what different things dream of and try and imagine what a tree would dream of, for instance. So partner A chooses a creature or a thing. So it could be a thing that is natural, like a tree or a cloud or something as man-made, like a cheese grater. Partner B says um, uh, what it dreams of. So partner A, if uh, so you give me either an animal or um, a natural uh, or a thing, David. Um, a carrot. OK, a carrot dreams <laughs> of tunneling deep into the earth. And then I then have to give you something to uh, say what it dreams of. So, OK, so um, I'm going to give you um, I'm going to give you a car. What does a car dream of? A car dreams of 
an open alpine road. Okay, now you give me something and I'll... So either, either things or uh, animals. <clears throat> well, this is an animal of some description, a head teacher. <laughs> a head teacher dreams <clears throat> of an extended summer holiday due to... <laughs> due to a, a sudden relaxing of the regulations. Okay, I'll give you uh, a natural one. So I'm going to give you um, a blade of grass. What would grass dream of? Ooh. A blade of grass dreams, dreams of, dreams of the morning dew dripping down to its root. Okay, now you give me something. Um, let's go with a hedgehog. <laughs> a hedgehog dreams. Mm. Now, I happen to know that hedgehogs eat snails uh, and earthworms. A hedgehog dreams of a plump pink earthworm. Nice. Right, now I'm going to give you a cricket ball. Oh. A cricket ball <clears throat> dreams. Is it will? Is it willow that a a bat is made from? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to go with um, a cricket ball dreams of a shiny, a shiny piece of willow knocking it for six. Okay. Can you give me one? Um. I'm going to go with a drip of water. Ah, oh, right. Do you know uh, what it, it dang? It's just dangling from the tap. Yes. A drip of water dreams of becoming the ocean. Aha. Uh -huh. I like that. You want one for me? Yes, I have. And I'm going to give you a fried egg. Oh, um, a fried egg dreams of being united with its best friend, crispy bacon. Okay, give me an animal and we'll end with that. Uh, I'm going to go with an elk. An elk? Yes. Um, they're a bit like mooses, aren't they? Moose. They are. Yes. They're like big reindeer. Yeah, kind of things, yeah. Yeah, okay. An elk dreams of... I, I think I'm right in saying that they love eating water lilies. And I don't quite know how I know that, but I think I'm right in saying that. It was in a book I read. <laughs> um, well, it must uh, be true. It must be true if it's in a book, yes. I'd rather have to Google that one. <laughs> An elk dreams of munching its way through a uh, a lake, um, a lake packed with rich water lilies. So the idea is you give each other little challenges, either a creature of some sort. So you, you, you've got animals, you've got birds, you've got creatures that you find in the sea. Um and or something that's man-made, uh, like a pencil. What would a pencil dream of? Uh, what would a ruler dream of? Or you're going to go for something in nature, a thing in nature, like um, like a tree or a hedgerow, uh, etc. And if you want to find ideas, I just look out of the window, let my mind roam a little bit, um, and bingo, there you go. So. John, I think we are ready for... I would have thought four minutes would do it. We yeah. don't need to swap roles because we're both challenging each other, so that's OK. OK, so I've got four minutes on the timer. Um, and I will start. So give each other objects that to, and what they dream of. Four minutes on the timer starting now.
All right, that sound, as you know, means uh, stop the game. And um, Pi, you'll be delighted to hear that uh, I've, I've Googled uh, the elk or the wapiti, as it is also known as. Um, and uh, there is no mention anywhere of, of elks or wapitis uh, dreaming of water lilies. In fact, their, their, their diet consists primarily, they, they have a real uh, like of silver birch trees. Uh, known as Aspen. Yeah, but it's a well-known fact, John, that they, <laughs> they they like water lilies for their pudding. Do they? Uh, okay. Yeah, they do, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> In my world, they do. <laughs> right, 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 right. So uh, straight on to uh, the uh, session page, which, as you know, if you go along the menu across the top, go along to sessions, click on the 9.30 session, and you will see today is the 23rd of January, 9.30 session. Um, and it says sessions two there, David. You've made a bit of a typo there. Um, We're not in session two. Pardon? It says session two on the top of the page. Well, this really? is session two. This is session two. Hey, poor oh. old John. Oh, he, oh. Oh. He, he makes... Oh. He, poor old thing sorry, we, sorry. We have to keep him well, going really not with it this morning right on to the padlet activity <laughs> we'll just ignore me completely. before embarrassing ourselves further yeah. okay so what we're going to do is choose a creature that you know something about now you could build on last week's work of some i was uh um looking at uh, a couple from stone with woodford there were some from forest academy uh where people have really really written closely and perceptively about um things like an owl there was a great wildcat one etc so choose something that you know a bit about uh, i know a lot about cats for instance but some of you may be onto dogs uh, there are a lot of blackbirds in our garden i know about them um over the years i suppose i've gathered a lot of information about horses particularly because i was brought up on a, a farm at one point so choose a creature that you know something about and then, of course, select some details. So think about things like its eyes, um, if it has ears, its ears, its mouth. If you look at the blackbird, for instance, um, we've got, can you make that larger, that blackbird, John? Yeah, so you can see, there we go. You can see his eye. You can see. It's a scruffy blackbird, that one. He, he is a bit, yeah, he's, he's, he's had trouble. He's a bit like that owl from last week. With the broken wing, he's had trouble. This blackbird, it's been a bit stormy. In, in the, when I, where I walk my dogs, we have a blackbird. Uh, in it's in Kirby Lonsdale near here, uh, near where I live. There's a blackbird that I see in the in the uh, churchyard at Kirby Lonsdale Church where I walk the dogs through. It has a white head, which is very unusual. And very unusual. I know my very regularly. Yeah, I know my friend Brian Moses. There's a squirrel near him that's albino. It's all white. Mm. Really rare. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, where are we? So select some details out. So with that blackbird, you've got the eye. You've got that bit around the eye. That was called the annulus, wasn't it? Yes. The annulus, the, the ring around the eye you've got. If you go down a bit, John, so I can just see the blackbird. You've got, thanks, you've got its beak, which really does look like a, a small, slim banana with a black point on the end. You've got those tail feathers jutting out. You've got the wings. And then you've got these legs that strangely, with our knees, we go one way. They sort of go the other way, um, birds, which is interesting. So you've got the legs and you've got the talons, which are gripping on there to the wall. So pick out some detail. If you scroll back up, John. So we've got some detail like the eyes, ears, the mouth, the teeth, the whiskers, the scales, etc. And then think about things that it does. Um, and then produce an I am. So what you're going to I am sentence, what you're going to do is you're going to imagine that you are part of the animal and then bring it alive by writing an I am sentence. I am the stubborn beak, banana yellow, ready to pick and peck. I'm the curved talons that grip the wall. I am the bedraggled feathers, rain soaked. You can see me doing the, the rain soaked, that little bit like a kenning. I'm the tail feathers, smooth and night dark. I am the startled eye, rimmed with a wedding ring of gold. And then I had a look at the cat, and the next one down. 
And there's a, quite a lot to notice on, on that cat. Splendid uh, image. You've got those whiskers. You've got the little speckly bits. You've got the tiny mouth. You've got the pink nose. You've got the annulus. You've got the iris. You've got the pupil, which interestingly is not round. It's a sort of different shape. And then you've got the fur and the different colours. So I wrote a few about this one. I'm the light green eyes that fix you with an intense stare. I'm the ebony pupils, like a slither of the night. Now, ebony is a type of wood, and it's very, very black and very hard as well. I'm the wiry whiskers, snow white, sprouting from my speckled mouth. I'm the pink nose, scenting the, for the air for a hint of fish or cream. So you're choosing a creature and basically you're pretending that you're different parts of its body and you're doing an I am sentence saying what you are. Can I mention commas, Pi? Uh, you can if you wish. Where, where have I missed one? So No, you haven't. I'm just wanting to point out that, in, in for example, the top line, I am the stubborn beak, banana Comma. yellow, ready to pick. Now, if you actually read that, you could... You could um, Right, I am the stubborn beak, ready to pick and peck. Yes. Um, and you've added the extra bit, the banana yellow, in there, which you've separated with commas. And the other thing I noticed was um, I am the tail feathers, smooth and night dark. When you're describing the tail feathers, I am the startled eye, rimmed with a wedding ring of gold. Uh, but where you use that... You so I have the light green eyes that fix you with it. You're carrying the sentence on. So there's no comma. So there's a you've got to be um, a little bit careful with the use of commas in this one, um, which might be tricky. And there's loads up already. OK, let's have a look, see what's going on. Uh, Mustafa from um, bouncing around. I am the terrifying teeth sticking out like vampire fangs. Um, very good. <laughs> Oliver from Ludden, I am the, the mouth that recklessly eats donuts. <laughs> I like, I like, uh, um, where's it gone? Sienna from uh, Bolton Parish, year four. Uh, nice use of a kenning. I am the tail wagger begging for your mouth watering bacon. Ah, yes, tail wagger. Nice yeah. little um, use of that kenning, John, there. Yeah, absolutely. Athene from MJS. I am the sharp teeth that bite into the slimy fish. Oh, Finley from St. Patrick's. Finley always comes up with a, a, an interesting idea. I am the pink frilly external gills of an axolotl floating in the water. Yeah, they're weird fish, aren't they? Or are they fish? I, I, are, they, are they kind of uh, salamanders? They're salamanders, I think, yes. I, think. I don't think they're fish. So, Dylan, I like your fins of the majestic dolphin. Try and get a bit more description in, a bit of adjectives or maybe one of those kennings in to bring it alive. Now, Habiba, I am the curious. Um, it's moving around. I'm curious of the sharp canines coming out of my mouth. I think you can strengthen coming out of my mouth. Are we going to go for sticking out of my mouth, poking, jutting out of my mouth? I think you can sharpen up that word. Harry's got a few uh, interesting ones there. I'm the paper thin whiskers curving in the gentle breeze. I'm the curious ears alert for any movement. I'm the damp pitch black nose twitching happily. And you've got that pitch twitch. You've got an internal rhyme there. That's worked well for you. I like Nicole's from Forest Academy. I am a cat with mesmerizing jade eyes that satisfy everyone that walks past. That's uh, I like the the use of mesmerizing. Yes, it's, it's cats, cats certainly do have mesmerizing eyes usually. Yes, Nicole from Forest Academy. I have the I am the uh, wiry snow whiskers sprouting from my speckled mouth. Uh,
Rehana from TGS. The pupils of my eye shine like diamonds. The pupils of my eye shine like diamonds. Probably could get an adjective in there. Shine like, I don't know, polished diamonds, glittering diamonds, gleaming ones. So you just tweak it a bit. Am I right in thinking, Pi? If you wanted to change that to a metaphor, you would just take the like out. So it would be uh, uh, the cat's eyes. Diamond uh, eyes, you could say. Yeah, diamond, diamond eyes, that's right, yeah. Yeah. yeah diamond yeah. eyes. Yeah, so you can get rid of the like. Uh, and that makes it even stronger. You're absolutely right. And sometimes the simile you can use as an adjective. I like Chloe's from Stonewood Woodford. I am the sly shape that pounces uh, softly from window to window at night. The sly shape is nice, yes, isn't it? It is. It is a nice yes. term. I've got, there's a lovely one here from Oliver um, from Ludham. So I presume this would be a dog, but it says, I am the tongue that furiously kisses you. <laughs> yes. And and both dogs and cats, particularly cats, are, it's sort of sandpapery. The tongue is quite rough. Yes. It's not the most pleasant feeling. No. <laughs> Now, Emily, I like your I am confused why my claws are sharp as knives. I like that I'm confused. Sharp as tiny knives. We've heard that knife one before. I'm going to challenge you. Can you get something else that's a bit different? There's one one here. Um, oh, it's just jumped. Where is it? Hang on a sec. This is uh, BG from uh, Ten Furlong as is go gone the full gone full kenning here i am the assassin descending from the sky i am my sharp talons ready to seize my prey dive bomber flying sweeper i think she's talking about a peregrine falcon but it, it could be a teacher but it could be a teacher of course Right, we're going to come out of the Padlet, see if we can get roughly back on to time today. There's loads going on there, so keep keep it going. Now, David, um, have we had any uh, audio today? Uh, we have, we have, and I'm uh, I'm taking a, I'm taking liberty this week uh, in my choice because I've not just chosen one. Um, well, you'll think I've probably chosen two, but I've not chosen two either. It's not even three. I can't even say I've chosen four because I've chosen five, John. Um, <laughs> and they're quite short, so um, allow me to. Uh, but the ch honestly, Pi, when you, hit, when you read these and hear these, you'll be able to see why I could have chosen 30 or 40 of them. Um, so I really urge teachers to, if you can, grab 10 minutes somewhere to allow the children to explore the audio padlet or share a few with them it is really uh, rich. And so I'll just put my, um, get my computer near the mic. Um, so yeah, they're, they're not too long, but they are worth it, believe me. So the first one I'm going to choose is um, one from Forest Academy. Now Forest did a, a, quite a lot there. So I've chosen, I've chosen more than one from Forest. Um, and this one's from Izzy. And it's the Golden Eagle. So I'll just turn the volume up and have a listen to this. The Golden Eagle. When I was pacing like a shard of glass, an overflowing smile as it stalks its prey. Thorny tip toenails, sneaky stalker. Bright yellow beak sizing up its next dish. An eye like a frisbee floating in the air. Bloody pecker, open-eyed sleeper, the hugger receiver with open arms, a letter right feather waver soars the sky. Hugger lover, wind waver, standing proud as they watch their young, overprotective and dangerous, you touch them. Danger bringer, young protector. Danger bringer, young protector. 
I love the, the lovely kennings in there, Pi, but some lovely, lovely sentences there as well. Yeah, it's got a nice pattern because you, you get um, a bit, then you get the kennings, then another verse, then the kennings, then another verse, then the kennings, and the kennings um, work really, really well. Thorny tip toenails, sneaky stalker. Was it was it Izzy? That one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just one thing, Izzy, don't when you when you're recording, don't have your mouth too close to the microphone. It causes a little bit of distortion. Okay, there's another one I've got here. No, this has no name. All right. Um uh, so I don't know where, where it's which school it's from or who who did it, but somebody's going to be very proud. Whether they can uh, teach can let me know somehow through either Twitter or an email. Uh, get in touch and we'll give you a shout out. But it's called the Red Stalker. I like the title already. Yeah, because I don't know and, what it is. And uh, what I like about this one, I can actually read online, uh, David. I can see on the or, or on the um, padlet. I can see the Red Stalker. I can see the words, which helps. Yeah. So I'll, I'll play this one again. Uh, do get in touch if it is you. But well done. A red stalker gliding through the sky, scouting for a nut. Its claws are like shards of flint, ready to pounce from tree to tree. Nut hugger, tree trekker, energy wanting to tap dance around the forest. Its tail racing any footprint and helps them balance on trees, mightily protruding through the windy sky. Now, there's some things that I mean, some great uh, tree trekker. Love yeah. that one. Uh, and also um, tap dancing around the forest. And when you think of a squirrel, it's probably yes. what it does. Yeah, I know. It's, and, and what it shows too, David, is you don't have to write lots, but what you do write needs to be startling, needs to be original, carefully thought about. And you've got a little nugget there so that was great whoever it was it, Do... was, it was vincent from forest academy because i uh, found wow. the poem on the site so I just i just used the search box to look for red stalker and up popped vincent from forest academy so well done vincent yeah well done super work okay this one's from uh stone with woodford um who've been who've been with us for a long time so and this is isabel uh no words on the on the one here this is just a, a, a an audio so Listen up, it's 40 seconds long, see what you think. Feline fell. Tiger's ears are cannons after firing, jolting upwards towards the unwary kill. Its eyes are car engine warning lights flickering on and off, glowing amber. Its whiskers are wiry needles, curved and uneven, sensing fear, touch, and its prey. Its teeth are yellowed ceramic wetted knives, cage bars, grasping its prey with a life stealing grip. Its growl is deep, fear striking, low and feral, making its prey know how desperately hungry it is. Its movements are unsurpassed, slinky, large, muscular thighs, cat walking towards its meal, pulsing in sync with its heart, rapidly beating, pumping adrenaline. There you got the. Uh... Life stealing grip. What about that? Yeah, it was a terrific one. It was a very, very rich one. Um, <coughs> when you're recording them, Isabella, if you can get the words on as, as well, it really helps. So, so well, well done. The yellow ceramic wetted knives, wetted no. and being sharpened. Yeah, superb work. Good cho choice of words there. Fantastic. Yeah, we've got um, one here, um, Kayla. From Forest Academy here. Uh, again, short, punchy, powerful pie, this one. So, well done, Kayla. Yes, climbing like a rock climbing. Teeth like a vampire about to fly. Fast as a lion or a cheetah. And claws breaking onto a mountain like a mountain climbing. Stalker walker, hungry predator. Vicious, bloodshot red eyes coming through at night. Pairing like the sound of a car, attacking like a viper, lest you our life ender. Life ender and stalker walker, Pine. Yeah, death stare wildcat with a tough tail, claws climbing up like a rock climber, 
teeth like a vampire about to bite, fast like a cheetah or a lion, and claws gripping onto mountains. Stalker, walker, hungry predator, vicious bloodshot red eyes coming for you at night, purring like the sound of a car, attacking like a viper, flesh devourer, life ender. It's got a sort of um, a movement through it, hasn't it? And it's very powerful. Um, there were a lot of really good ones from Forest Academy, and it, it, that interested me. I wondered... They must have done a, a, a bit of a session together, um, maybe some uh, shared writing, doing a class one together, a um, bit of work on it uh, and gave it some time because there was some superb stuff. We ought to press on, John, oughtn't we, to the yes. um, we need to. Jotcast. Yeah, Great work, you. everyone. Well done. Uh, so if we move on to the uh, <clears throat> Teaching Live site, um, I found uh, uh, Isabella's poem just by googling by searching wetted because it's such an unusual word so um we go need to go to the session page and go to uh, the live writing jotcast now we're going back to this because we're beginning to learn how to you how to write a kenning and of course you could use kennings in stories as well um you could drop them in as part of your description you know she stared at the man who stood before her. He was night, part night walker, part shadow stalker. So you could use those kennings um, in your narrative, and it really adds a bit of extra humph to it. So what I've done here is I've gone for the cat first of all, John, if you can scroll up to that one. And in order to do the kenning, um, in fact, have I given some instructions further up, John? <coughs> no, no, I haven't. OK, I've gone straight. I've gone straight for it. So in order to do it, you've got to think about um, what the what a, the creature does. So cats do things like they drink milk, they purr, they scratch, they go out at night hunting, they eat mice, um, they curl up when they go to sleep. They tend to sleep on things like cushions and sofas, comfy, warm places, and they clean their fur with tongues. So I know quite a bit about them. So I take each idea. So the first one, well, they drink milk, so milk lapper. They like to purr, so I put purr crooner. And a crooner is somebody who does a sort of low um, singing. Uh, they scratch tables and chairs and things. So I've got table scratcher, night hunter, mouse chewer, sofa napper, fur cleaner. So that was my cat one. And then these are hounds. These are dogs. So I've got, um, OK, so I'm thinking, well, they growl a lot, so I've got gruff growler. Touch of alliteration there. Cat prowler, because they sometimes chase cats. Um, certainly those ones are mud rollers. And then they like a stick being thrown for them, and they bring them back. So I've got stick muncher. Fire snoozer. Uh, the dogs we used to have when I was a kid loved getting in front of the fire uh, and sleeping. Big bruiser. I got snoozer, and I thought of bruiser. And then I thought, oh, a big bruiser. And those ones are quite big, burly animals. They bark at the moon sometimes. Moon barker, post marker, tail wagger, meat eater. So we're into the business of thinking of different creatures and inventing some kennings to go for the creature. And you could do them one at a time. So, John, your name goes in there and where you uh, are based. So don't forget your school names, everybody. I mean, he's got to think of a kenning or two. So he's thinking of a creature he knows well. And what do they do? I mean, you turn it snake. He needs his hyphen. Oh, snake, snake belly. Snake is a belly slitherer. Got you, John. I see what you're doing. Belly slitherer as it slides around on its tummy, belly slitherer, scaly sneaker. What else do snakes do? They bite. They have venom. Venom, what's it going to go for? Injector? Stinger? Injector. 
That will probably do you, John. We've got three very nice ones there. And of course, if you get the kennings right, we'll know what creature it is. So think about your creature, something that you know about. What does it do? I mean, you're in business. You're muted, John. Probably best. All right. Probably best, yes. Uh, Adelaide from MJS. Uh, furniture destroyer uh, for a cat. Yep. Certainly if they're not well trained. Beef bringer. Cow. I like the touch of alliteration <laughs> to that. Beef bringer. <laughs> Savannah. Bucket. Yeah, bucket now. <laughs> Arena master. <laughs> Forest runner, big bruiser, grass eater. I think that's probably a dog. No, it can't be a dog. Is it a bucket napper? Forest runner, is that? Is it a horse? But, but, but I don't get how a bucket napper could fit. Because they 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 can they eat the food out of the bucket, don't they? Okay. Yes, but they don't nap in buckets. Hmm. Rory from Stone with Woodford, cheese muncher, cat aware, home in Fester. Mice. Uh, it's a mouse. Uh, George, Georgie from uh, John Moore. Night hunter, mouse chewer, fur cleaner, sleep lovers. That's an owl for sure. Um, Grayson from Rolvenden, bone crusher. Could be a number of things, I think. What? What? <clears throat> bone... I think that's a bone crusher. The Vikings used to name their. Um... Their hat, their swords, their swords hammers, and things, didn't they? Like bone yeah. crusher or skull smasher and things like that. I, I like Lily from John Moore's uh, Ladybird, a giggle bringer. Oh, that's a nice <laughs> one, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I honestly have a thing about ladybirds. Um, don't like them at all, and, and and it's because they can look all innocent and they're crawling, but you know when they open their wings. And they suddenly just take off. That really freaks me out. Ladybirds are able to fly. Shock news, David. No, but this it, is how sudden they do it. <laughs> just don't know when they're going to do it. Okay. So that be that would that apply to it all insects in general then? Or Fence jumper. Ladybirds. Just ladybirds. <laughs> ladybirds. <laughs> Lily from Rolvenden. Bunny is a small sniffer. Earwagger, Aiden, bone cruncher, flesh ripper, cub protector, food hunter. That'll be the tiger again. Chloe from Stone. She wrote a very good poem about um, the wild cat last week. Treat gobbler, mouse catcher, sky gazing, daydreaming. Malice, fur licker, bacon stealer. Luke. Soul spearhead, flesh ripper, bone racker. Why that soul spearhead? Interesting. Austin's crocodile, jaw snapper, scaly swimmer, animal hunter. Get your um, uh, hyphens in there. So you're, you're sort of making one idea out of two words. You're bringing the two words together for it to be one idea. So Sicily, you need though. You you'll need the um, hyphens in. Fur licker, sofa nap, a dog fighter, door scratch, a cute nipper, night hunter, mouse chewer, milk sipper. Great one. Now choose another creature. You've got time to do some more. Hold on, Mason, Ewan. There's a lot of people forgetting their hyphens in their kennings. Yes. So, so what Alex, you're doing is you... Our agile runner. I like agile runner. Yes. Incisor, impaler. Yeah, that's a good word. Incisor. Well, uh, well, you... Pack hunter. That's a dog. What do you think this one is there? This is from Harriet Stone with Woodford. A fish chewer, waterfall camper, and meat shredder. Bear? Yes, I think it must be a grizzly. Yeah. They they're like they they it's it's you basically got two ideas. You've got the idea of fish and chewing. But you make it into not two ideas, but one idea by joining them together with a hyphen. The other thing about them, they are all um, actually riddles. 
So what is it? A mud walker, corn eater, fast runner, egg layer. It's a chicken. They're riddles. <clears throat> I think one of the things that's very interesting about them is the that these this the special kenning thing that they um this is a, an ancient form of writing that's been around for a thousand years two thousand years yes uh, finley's description of a uh, black labrador cuddly blanket that works <laughs> And of course, the really clever thing is if you can get a rhyme in between a pair of them. And I think if you listen carefully to the syllables as well, Pi, that makes yes. a difference to the to the to the rhythm of the actual riddle, if it was. Yes. So you've got Amelia's, you've got yeah, Matt sleep. Eater, Cat Chaser. So you've actually got Matt and Cat rhyming. And Eater and Chaser are what you might call a half rhyme. They're almost there. And deep sleeper has an internal rhyme. Yes, that's a nice one, isn't it? Yeah. And Emery, so I like the way you've tried a hippopotamus out, something slightly different to the usual. And Eloise, look at that, carrot eater, mud roller, ground thumper. Uh -huh. That's a rabbit for sure. Yes, that's a oh, rabbit, yeah. What, what do you think this one is? This is a lovely one. Uh, two lines from Sam and Bismer at MJS. Ink squirter, shapeshifter. Oh, that's a brilliant one, isn't it? That's either a squid or an octopus, isn't it? Yeah, octopus. We've got one there. Uh, shapeshifter. I love it. Yeah, that's that's a little poem in itself. You could sort of go, "What am I?" Ink squirter, shapeshifter. And that's it, and that, that will do us. Stubby snoozer. I like that one. Who's that one? Ellie and Zach. Stubby snoozer. Ear yeah, flopper. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> Stubby snoozer. <laughs> right yeah there's there's uh some excellent ones so we need to come out of the padlet uh and move on uh and we need to have a quick look in the gallery i'm not sure did anybody post anything in the gallery oh nope. yes yes oh yes, it's 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 oh, yes. Wow, the well, Bolton Parish. You make, can you make mirrors bigger top right uh, left hand corner john if you go back up can you make that one bigger How's that? Wow. Yes. Sort of that that one, the Midnight Tiger. That was done with a lot of care, wasn't it? Yeah, it was indeed. That's a, that's tremendous. Tremendous, I thought. Yeah. Really good. Uh, and and this one as well, Muktis. Muktis, you see. Yeah. That takes time, you see, and it's like the writing. Um the writing from Forest Academy or Stone. Or Bolton Parish, they're taking time over it so that they get the quality. Because if you do it quickly, the likelihood is you, you're not devoting enough time to it. Yeah, some there's some oh, I like Rufus's butterfly. Um and Riley's uh, tiger, Robert's uh, eagle, yeah, and Lacey's squirrel. There's yeah, loads. God, goodness me. Forest have really gone the for forest this. Forest and, uh, yeah, and then we're into last terms. Very good. So it stuff. would be nice, John, if um, Morelands could get some of theirs up, because I know they were tremendous because we saw them on Twitter. That would be great to have those up there as well. Indeed, indeed. Uh, and so what's the, what's the uh, uh, gallery challenge this week, Pi? Well, the gallery challenge is, in essence, the same. Um, it's choosing um the creature that you're going to write about and doing an illustration of it if you go further down i had a go at the cat but it's not something that i'm going to i'm a, oh there he is that's my cat but my goodness it was difficult john not as good as me as i have to say pi no not at all um i said that pi i really i do like the eyes there yeah you've no, done the, the eyes well yeah i started actually with the eyes um but it was a tricky one. I could have done with oh, more. I'm, I'm criticising because my, my mine would be far worse. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was quite pleased with the colouring of it. Yes. And, um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm OK with that. Yeah, so good. 
another illustration. And if you scroll down a bit, John, we get into the blog. So this is about choosing, drawing on everything we've done, choosing a creature that you know something about and you feel in tune with. One of the things I used to get children to write about was if you were an animal, which animal would you be and why? What would you be, John? Oh, good question. You threw that one at me. I would be a peregrine falcon. Yeah, falcon. Yeah. What about you, David? What animal would you be? Well, I was th- I was thinking either something high up in the sky, like I was thinking more of an eagle thing, but then I'm thinking in the ocean. I'd, I'd like a dolphin, I think, would be quite interesting. Would be, yeah, it would be great, wouldn't it? Um, so uh, I've got three examples here and then one by um, Catherine Hoblin, who I taught years ago. So I'll just read these to you. Um, and I've done them a bit like rid- riddles and I've remembered my kennings. I curl asleep and gently purr. I squeeze my eyes shut tight as shells. I'm a fur cleaner, claw sharpener. I'm a night stalker, street padder. I walk along high walls and wail at the moon. I'll sneak home sly as a snake. I'll slip indoors through the cat flap. And you notice there, John, I've got I or my as, as a sort of way of beginning. So the second one, that's obviously a cat. Second one. I work beneath the moon, night friend of the fox and badger. I hide away in the day. I'm a field scanner seeking the slightest grass tremble. I'm a night glider, wings spread wide, eyes fixed on the grass below. My talons tense like daggers ready to seize. My my amber eyes are alert. I'm the ghost that calls asking who, who is there? That's obviously an owl. See if you can guess this one, because this one is not so obvious, perhaps. I stand in the shallows, stiller than a statue, eyeing the stream for the slightest quiver. As a slither of silver betrays a minnow, I wait, hooded in in a grey feathers, hooded in grey feathers, like a monk's cloak. Isn't it interesting how... I spotted the mistake when I read it, if you know what I mean, Uh, like a monk's cloak. My eyes see beneath the current. I'm a patient stilt stander. I'm a frog stabber. If nothing better swims by, I'll flap my wings and slowly rise. Wings like two great grey flags. I'll splish, splash, fish, snatch. Now, this one. Um was written by Catherine Hoblin when she was eight. And um, she decided she was a tiger. So we had all sorts. We were doing work on Africa. I remember one or two kids did things like hyenas, obviously lions, but different creatures. We'd done quite a lot of work on information. So we knew some facts about different animals. Watching, waiting, crouching low for you to walk into my trap. My sleek pink tongue hangs out of my jaw as I pant in the heat of the scorching sun. I'm striped like a humbug. My feet are padded like a cushion. As I lie waiting for you, I close my eyes to slits as the sun's scorching beams beat down on my back. But when night falls, the moon rises. Its rays are cold. It cools me down from the burning sun. So I sit on a rock and sing my song. I'm waiting for you. When you come, I will pounce and you dig my claws in and tear at the flesh. I will eat every bit of you. After, I will leave your bones picked clean by my fangs to bleach in the sun. Wow. That was written by an eight-year-old. Yeah, that was Catherine. She was a genius writer. Really, really good. (laughs) Yeah, terrific piece. So the big challenge on the blog, if we go back into the blog, uh, John, um the big challenge is to choose out an animal that you know something about um we're going to include kennings obviously because we've been doing some of those but take the models you've got my cat owl and my third one which was a heron it was a heron absolutely yeah i love herons we've got quite a lot in the valley where we are they stand uh in the canal and the waters down there um so um, and, and 
and it's I, 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 I will help you hugely when you're writing it. But again, take care with it. Think about what it looks like. Think about what it does. Uh, you don't need to write lots. So you can have a fairly short one. The other thing you could do, of course, is just to do a riddle, a what am I, and have a list of really well chosen kennings. That would be another thing that could be done, John. Yes, absolutely. So I like that. I like the idea of a, a riddle. So um, it's uh, either either like this or as kennings, but writing it in the first person is going to be I stand in the shallows, stiller than a statue. Uh, that's going to help you with your um, structure. Yes, and it, it's if you it's, write it as a riddle, so so put it's sort of imagining yourself as the creature. That's it. Its perception was looking carefully at things. Imagination was imagining what it is like to be that thing. Yes, the doors of perception and all that. Yes. So if Very we good. go down, we uh, just remind us, John, how do we get our blog up? Because I don't so think get the put a blog, blog up. up by using the form beneath the post. Uh, now, all the schools should be on there, I hope. If your school is missing, please let me know, teachers, and I'll make sure it's on uh, on the list. But I think I think it's it should be on there. Title of your blog post, first name and copy and paste your blog post below if you've done it in a different word processor when it's a short poem like this um you, you can probably get away with it once but it's always good to have a copy anyway just in case there is an issue and only submit it once please we get a few people particularly towards the start of every season not sure if it's gone through it always does uh, we never have a problem with that so i only submit it once and we won't get uh, um, duplications. So uh, we've actually, uh, we've done really well there to, to, after, after a, a somewhat late start this morning. Thank you, Pi. Um, we've actually finished more or less on time. Uh, really great start. If you're recording audio, make sure you practice your audio before you record it. And don't uh, put your mouth too close to the microphone, because if you do, you you do get uh, a little bit of distortion. So, um, you know, uh, keep your keep uh, a, a sensible distance. Microphones on on things like uh, laptops and iPads are designed to pick up sound when you are sitting at a table with the you don't need to lean right in to do the recording. You can just sit at a normal distance. I really noticed that people had, had got very quiet backgrounds there, which was also really good because that 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 helps a, a great deal um, not to do it in a noisy classroom because uh, <laughs> they're almost impossible to listen to uh, when we play them back. So apart from that, fantastic. David, anything to report? Well, I think I just the audios, the quality of the audios were fantastic. Uh, really enjoyed uh, re uh, listening to those and putting them on. Um, like I said to teachers, it's really worth giving time to go back to look at the Padlets uh, for the children and the audios as well. Some great work, everybody. The quality is, is really ramping up, isn't it, Poe? It certainly is. Um, some superb work. I mean, well, Moreland's we know was some fabulous stuff. Forest Academy, some superb stuff. Stone, some su superb stuff. Um, and and, Bolton, and Parish. Bolton Parish really working hard there. Ibrahim, of course, Mabendu, lots of others. So, and a lot coming through on the the Jotcast, uh, etc. This morning. So, looking forward to seeing some of this quality work. Remember, you don't need lots. It can be fairly short, but it's got you. You're going for really becoming that creature, and um, try to um, push yourselves. So you surprise me when I, I read it. So it's not got cliches in it. Great work this morning. Well done, everybody. And next week we will be looking at The Poem Tiger by William Blake. We'll be doing some writing from that. And next week, I think you need to get into reading, uh, beginning to read. Pace yourselves because we've then got we've got next week and then we've got four weeks where we'll be working on story um, and we'll be feeding off the book Tiger by S.F. Said.
Right, great stuff. And you keep pacing yourself, Pi. Just remember that we've got another session starting at 11 o'clock. Not 11.03, but 11 o'clock. So we'll see you next week, everybody. Uh, And that's all.